Terry Cicero to introduce our speaker. Well, oh, so I'm muted. Am I not muted now, right? Okay. I can hear you. We can hear yeah, you. Hi. Um, did you know that people that practice an attitude of gratitude have better relationships and feel less aches and pains? Extensive clinical research has shown that individuals that are consistently grateful enjoy happier existences. Our guest, Dave Brooks, has been studying and speaking about living a life of gratitude for over 20 years. He has a thousand, over a thousand videos on YouTube on the subject of gratitude and has made over 650 presentations in the last seven years to champion and illustrate the incredible power. David is an international best-selling author and has written many books on the subject of gratitude, including the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal and six word lessons to embrace gratitude. So if you want better relations, better sleep, better physical, mental, and psychological health with fewer aches and pains, then you're really gonna wanna pay close attention to what David has to teach us today. Please join me in welcoming from Seattle, the gratitude guy, David George Brook. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate that so much. I might add before I start that I'd like you, you're all in your houses or condos or apartments or what have you, to grab a piece of paper, a pen and, and or a pencil and have your cell phones handy too. And if you don't have access to paper, that's fine. But uh, I do, this is a very interactive uh, talk and I'll take about 20 minutes and just to really get across the impact that gratitude can have for you. And I can't think of a time in our life that it's probably more important than right now, given what has happened. So I think if, and also if I could ask you a couple of times to give me a thumbs up when I ask you, that way we won't have to worry about people chiming in, but I may ask you a couple of times if that makes sense and if you could signal with a, a thumbs up and actually just, you can do it on Zoom, but you can do it in front of your uh, camera as well. But I think if I was to ask everybody here, uh, what portion of you had suffered a significant personal loss in your life, I would guess that the vast majority would probably say yes. And I've suffered a number of significant losses in my life, including losing my wife about 20 years ago when my, my sons were young and my mother and father and my father to suicide and some oh, friends and, and some buddies in the war and so forth. And so as a result of that, it made me think I've got to find something. And ultimately that was gratitude as Terry said in the intro. But I think prior to that, it just does come down and depend on how you look at something. We know you've all heard the glass half full and the glass half empty and all that type of thing. But I can think back on when I was running a foot race, I used to do a lot of 10 Ks and I did a marathon and so forth. And I was running from Overlake Golf Course into Husky Stadium across the new floating bridge. And, and it was a rainy day and I'm running along and it's packed, oh gosh, sorry. I was packed with people. And I got about halfway across the bridge and I noticed there was all these people in front of me and it was up kind of where the uh, fountains were. And I happened to look back and I saw there was thousands of people behind me. And even though little kids were running by me, I thought, I looked in front of me and I thought, you know what? If all these people in front of me weren't here, I'd be in first place. And what if they just happened to not call in today or call in sick or hadn't come in? So that kind of comes back to how you look at something. So here's the first thing I'd like you to do with that piece of paper. And if you don't have any paper and a pencil, that's fine. But I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to write down, and I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. I want you to write down about five to 10 characteristics that somebody else, a close friend, would describe you as. You are energetic, you are intelligent, you are bright. However, a really close friend would describe you, not you, but a close friend, and I'll give you 30 seconds, go. Okay, there's 30 seconds, and I'm, I'm trying to cram a lot into 20 minutes, so hopefully you wrote down four or five things, but as you look at what you wrote down, how that friend described you, as you read down those four or five or 10 items, whatever you wrote, 
by a signal of a thumbs up. Do you feel better when you read those five things? If you do, give me a thumbs up. Yeah, and I can only see about 25 or so of the people. It looks, thank you. But it looks like the vast majority of the people do. The reason I do that exercise is because why is it that a friend, a close friend, a family member, somebody else that knows you as well as they do, why do they see you in such a better light than you, than you see yourself? And that's part of the significance of gratitude because gratitude is all about focusing on what you have versus what you don't have. And one of the examples that I thought about is that I don't get why this, we have this, again, this be ourselves up. I used to call myself a word that I will not even say anymore, but I'll spell it. And I, I refuse to even bring it up and verbalize it. But I used to call myself an L-O-S-E-R. And I never quite understood that. If you can't advocate for yourself, who can you advocate for? But you think about what we're going through now, this unprecedented unbelievable global, not just the United States, like with 9-11 and different things, but this global pandemic that we're dealing with. How are you dealing with that? And how are you focusing on? Somebody said to me the other day, okay, Mr. Gratitude Guy, you know, I call myself that gratitude guy. What is there to be grateful for? This thing's a nightmare. People are dying. Tony had mentioned getting the virus and so forth. So I came up with it. I did a video on this the other day and I thought, well, let's just look for a second at some of the things we could be grateful for. Several people today have mentioned on here about Zoom, but look at technology. We have these computers and these webinars, these Zoom calls, which are great. And of course, the cell phones with all the texting and FaceTime and apps and so forth. Healthy how grateful are you to not have the virus? That's something to be very grateful for. And then there's extra time now. Everybody's got to have to self uh, homeschool rather the kids whose school is out. But here's all these extra time now, this extra time we get with our family, our spouse or our children. And even the science today, you know in, in six to 18 months, they're going to have a vaccine for this. The social connection, you appreciate the connection and, and you get to have more time with people. Family dinners are making a comeback for crying out loud. I remember that when I was growing up. But it also makes us appreciate the personal touch and how important that is face to face. Where we miss the hugs, we miss the handshakes, we miss the eye contact and the smiles. And this Zoom is great. There's no question it's fantastic, but it's not quite, it's a, it's a close second, but it's not quite the real thing. And you appreciate that more because it's been taken away right now. And then we're so efficient. I was thinking about how many times I've had a coffee appointment. I've driven through, tar uh, through, through traffic and parking hassles and the rain and, and construction zones to get to a coffee at a Starbucks, had a coffee for an hour, spent an hour getting there and an hour leaving, a three hour chunk of time where now you can do it one hour on Zoom. So much more efficient. These services, we can get groceries delivered to our door. We can get food delivered to our door, meals and so forth. And then look at how many people have commented already today on this sense of community. And it's great and Zoom is fantastic, but it creates such a sense of community that we're seeing like never before people are coming together because of what's happened in our world. And lastly, it's my favorite word, gratitude. And that is we're embracing gratitude. It helps to realign your priorities. A month ago or two months ago, something that wasn't that important or was important then isn't that important now. I heard somebody the other day complaining about, well, we don't get to go to the trip to Hawaii. Well, that's not very important right now when we're talking about health and family and friends and so forth. And, and I just mentioned here that this is when gratitude really shines and you find out what is really important to you and what makes you happy. And you focus on your blessings and abundance. And one of the things I say a lot is gratitude turns what you have into enough. We constantly are trying to keep up with the Joneses. and Who's got the bigger house, the better boat, the better girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it might be. And if you just fo uh, focus rather on what you have, it makes such a big difference. And it does take as long as it takes. There's always going to be patience involved. And Winston Churchill said, never, ever, ever give up. And that's so really important. But you've also got to get rid of junk. You got to make room for gratitude in your brain and you got to clear it out. Because I had a father that happened to take his own life, which as I mentioned earlier, which was unfortunate. But he was one of those people that I'd say to him, dad, good morning. And he'd go, what's good about it? And I just thought, well, what kind of comment is it? The one of, gosh, sorry, one of five children to say what's good about it. And I'd say, it's a sunny day. He goes, it's going to rain tomorrow. And I thought, wow, you can always, you can always see that again, that glass half or that uh, full or empty. And my question is, is any of the 50 of you that are on here, how fast can you change? Everybody says, well, you can change a habit. It's 28 days, it's 38, it's 30 days, it's a month, it's all that kind of thing. 
I contend you can change anything. You can start, I'm gonna talk about a gratitude journal in a second. I contend you could start writing in this tomorrow and you can change that fast. In my career, I used to work at Nordstrom and I was a store manager and I worked my way up to be a store manager. But before that, I'd been in the suit department and I was getting all these accolades. I was making all these, uh, selling lots of suits and, and really creating the number one department in the store and so forth. And one day I'm in the lunchroom and this guy comes up to me, he worked in maintenance. And he says, uh, are you Dave Brooke? Are you the guy that works in the suit department? I said, yeah. And he goes, you know what the story is on you around here? And I went, what's that? And he goes, everybody thinks you think you're hot stuff. And he said another word that starts with S and ends with T. And um, I said, oh, you're kidding. He goes, yeah, you walk around here. You don't talk to anybody. You have your little briefcase, your little shiny shoes. And you just kind of walk around here. You, you are always in the too busy and you just ignore everybody. And apparently everybody thinks you think you're pretty cool. And I remember it clearly like it was yesterday. And I stuck out my hand and I shook his hand. His name was Steve. And I said, Steve, thank you so much for having the guts to tell me that. And I walked out of that lunchroom door and I snapped my fingers and I decided I'm going to become the friendliest guy in this store. And those crisscross escalators that go like that don't go any faster if you talk to people. And so when you'd start saying hi, I'd started saying hi to every single person I could find from every cosmetic uh -huh. department to the shoe departments, to the cafe, to you name it. And that's how fast you can change behavior. It doesn't have to be 28 days or 30 days or any of that kind of thing. You can snap your fingers and decide, I want to get more gratitude into my life and it can happen that fast. So speaking of gratitude, by a thumbs up, how many people here have heard of a gratitude journal? Anybody that has. So let me see, it's, I'd say about maybe half. Well, I had never heard of a gratitude journal and when my wife passed away and, and a lot of bad things has happened to me, a buddy of mine says, you ought to get a gratitude journal. In fact, every once in a while when he, he hears, did you have a talk yesterday? And he goes, did you mention my name? I go, yeah, I mentioned your name. His name is Bob, Bob Corsetto. And he's the one that told me that. So now he'll feel better. But he told me, he says, you need to get a gratitude journal and you need to do something that's going to help you because you haven't been the same since your wife passed away and these other things have happened. But it's an incredible tool to use and it's formatted as... There's a side here on the left where you write the day and the date and what you're grateful for and the highlight of your day. And then on the right-hand side, you write what you're grateful for tomorrow, which I will get into later uh, at another time because I can't right now. So but here's what I want you to do. Get back to those pencils and papers, please. And I want you to think about, this is a very personal exercise. Most of you are by yourself. And I want you to assign a number to yourself from one to 10. And 10 is the best day of your life right at this very moment. And one is one of the worst days of your life. And you're not going to share this with anybody. So you don't have to worry about what your number is. But I want you to write that number down. Write it down. It's somewhere on your page there. One to 10. And you can do halves. You could be a seven and a half, eight. Just you're kind of taking your temperature, if you will, is what you're doing with this. So write that number down and put a circle around it. Then next, I want you to write down number one. What is the number one thing you're most grateful for in this life? You could only, if you could only pick one thing, write that down at number one. All right, at number two, what is the second thing you're most grateful for? Write that down at number two. All right, and lastly, number three, this might take just a few seconds. What was the highlight of your day yesterday? I want you to write down the best thing that happened to you yesterday. <coughs> okay, so now you wrote, you wrote that number down and again, you're not sharing it with anybody. When I do these in person, I do a lot of talks in person until everything that's happened now. Um, I tell people, don't share it with somebody. So if you're not having a good day, it's just between you and the number. So no big deal. So now you see the number you wrote. Now I want you to reread those three things that you wrote. And then below those, I want you to write another number to describe your daily number. It could be the same or it could have changed. But whatever it is, read those three things, the, the top gratitude thing, the second gratitude thing, and the grateful, or the, excuse me, the highlight of your day yesterday, and write another number below it. Could be the same number, it might have changed. 
Excuse me, what was that number supposed to represent? After you, what number, how you feel, kind of taking your temperature after you've read the three things. Oh, okay. okay, so when you see the number at the top and the number at the bottom, if you had a number that stayed the same from the top to the bottom, give me a thumbs up. Okay, see a couple. If the number from the bottom to the top went up, give me a thumbs up. Whole bunch of thumbs. That's the power of a gratitude journal. That's a one minute exercise to show you how much, if you take the time to write in a gratitude journal every single day, it'll impact you and it can impact just that taking that temperature, that daily number, if you will. On these particular journals, I do sell a lot of these. You can get them on my, grat uh, at, on my website, rather, thatgratitudeguy.com. But it says the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. And I have these fraternity brothers that I see uh, from time to time, about once a month or so for coffee. They named me the Brooker back when I was at the University of Washington. And they always would call me. They go, I need to dose the Brooker. I need some inspiration. I need some motivation. And so now they call me and they say, I'm having a tough day. Uh, can you give me a little injection of some motivation from the Brooker? And I go, let me ask you something. Did you write in your gratitude journal yet? And they go, no. And I just, bam, I just hang up on the phone. I just press the red button and they're gone. And I just, and they go, they, all of a sudden I wait about 10 seconds. Here's a call. I think we got cut off. They go, no, we didn't. I hung up on you. Go write in your gratitude journal first and then call me and see how it impacts you and so forth. So, and speaking of which, grab your cell phones real quick, if you would. I'd love to pull my audience to kind of get a flavor. I would like you to text me to this number, 206-371-8309. It's 206-371-8309. The number one thing you're grateful for. Just text me what you're grateful for. I like to see the sort of the flavor of the audience, if you will, because there's a lot of things that are typical, but a lot of times things surprise me. 206-371-8309, the number one thing you're grateful for. All right, thank you for that. And so last couple of things, and I'm gonna wrap up in about five minutes, is another thing I talk about a lot is find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. Especially at my age, I'm 70, and I can't believe time has gone by this fast. Are you kidding me? And if you have a good connection with yourself, things are going to work better. But at that relationship that you have with yourself is so important. And I was telling somebody once, I went down to, to Las Vegas with a buddy of mine, and we were playing slot machines. And, and all of a sudden, you hear all this racket is when the quarters were there. And so the quarters are crashing. He put a quarter in, he won $1,000. So the quarters are just crashing down. He's going like this with his fist. And he goes, I'm buying dinner. And Brooker, look at this. I want all this money. And I stood next to him and I looked at him. And I thought, you know, I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. But I'd be just a teeny bit happier if it was me. And I was just watching. <laughs> and so yeah. I guess I must have a good relationship with myself. It, you know, charity starts at home. You got to build a good foundation. Put the mask on you first before you put it on your child. How you have that relationship is so important. Next big thing is you got to find something you're passionate about. I had a friend once took out a check. We're having coffee and he writes a check, a million dollars. And he hands it to David Brooke and he hands me the check. And he goes, I could make this good. He's pretty wealthy. And he goes, but before you take that check, let me ask you this. If you take this check, you got to stop being that gratitude guy. Would you do it? And I said, no. And he took it back. That means I found my passion. So something that you are, I just, I get to do this two or three times a week. It's thrilling to me. If I change one life today, one person that sees something a little bit differently, it was worth it to me. That's what having passion about something you can do. And then finally, after finding yourself and finding your passion, you find your purpose. And if you don't think purpose is powerful, just see people that haven't figured out something to do after they've retired. A lot of my friends are retired. Some of them are just sitting around watching TV. They're not doing much. That's fine. I'm just saying, I'm going to do this till I can't walk anymore, or can't talk anymore. But you look at things like Bear Bryant won a bunch of championships at Alabama. He retires from the school. 60 days later, he's dead. Andy Rooney was on 60 Minutes for years. He retires. About three months later, he's dead. Joe Paterno gets fired at Penn State, and about two and a half months later, he dies. So when the purpose is gone, it's really, really suspect. So last things I'm going to say, as I mentioned on the gratitude journal, 
thatgratitudeguy.com. If you're interested in buying them, that's fine. They're $15 a piece. But the main thing is that just get a spiral notebook. It doesn't matter to me. Get something and write in it every day. It's unbelievable how it'll impact you and make a difference when you're focusing on what you have. Lastly, if you want to get a Monday morning minute, I send out a one minute video every Monday morning. Text grateful to 42828. That's grateful to 42828. And you'll get on the little email and it'll send you a one minute video. I do one every, this one last week, surprisingly enough, was about coronavirus. So last thing, get those, get those smartphones out. I want to share a little gratitude and here's what I want you to do. There's nothing more important than when you get excited about something than to share it. This is part of the reason why this is difficult for all of us. We're doing things all in our homes and we're, we're not able to share and we're not able to spend time together and whether it's at the mall or whether the movies or whatever it is. So it's much more difficult when you're on your own. So we're going to share this and I call this the four T's text, t telephone, tweet, or tell, but I'm going to have you probably text. I'm going to give you 30 seconds because I'm running out of time. I want you to text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And I'll give you 30 seconds and just use the word grateful. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. So text in, I'll give you 30 seconds, go. And if you don't have a phone, you can please promise me you'll write a note to somebody too today and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. All right, there's 30 seconds. And if you can keep, you want to keep doing it, that's fine. Of course, when I do this talk in the high schools, they've done about 15 texts. It's unbelievable how fast their fingers move on that little phone. But it is interesting to me. It's always fun because one of my favorite things to wrap up by people come up and they tell me, look what the, the person responded to me. And they go, they show me their phone. And they go, isn't this cool? And here's one that comes up the other day. And she says, I texted it to the guy and she shows me the phone and says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And so I thought, wow, that's a great response. And another person said, are you sure you sent this to the right person? So but it's important to let people know on a regular basis how grateful we are to them. And I remember being in a performing arts center out in Bothell. And this is one where I said, you can text or telephone. And there's a lady in the second row and she was telephoning and I could hear her from the stage. And she goes, she's, she's talking, I'm pretty sure it's her husband. I'm so grateful for you too, honey. I appreciate you so much. I just want to tell you what you mean to me. And it's just so important to me. That, I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> what? No, it's not my idea. It's your idea. Gosh, don't do that. Make a pick it came from you. So I will tell you, if you embrace gratitude, if you really, really focus on it, get a gratitude journal. It can change your life. It can help you like a power assist through something like this coronavirus epidemic, unbelievable pandemic more than anything, but it can make a difference. It made a huge difference in my life. I think it changed in many cases, saved my life from many of the things I went through too, and it can save you too. Thank you so much. Thank you, David, that was great. We have maybe two minutes for any, any follow-up questions anybody has for David Brooke before we close our program? Everyone is unmuted. I just want to say that I'm really grateful for you, Dave. That was a, a real um, um, <clears throat> positive way to, to um, spend 20 minutes of this day or half an hour. I appreciate it. Sheila? Thank you, Sheila. I will tell you, I didn't mention this word, but it's so important. Everything in life is a choice. And when you get up out of bed, you can get out of the left bed, left side of your bed, or the right side of your bed. You can decide if it's going to be a good or a bad day. This is the most challenging. I, I'm, I pretty much, I think I can say any of us have ever been through. We've been through some other things, but this is a, a pretty unbelievable situation. And you have a choice to how you want to look at this. And that's why if you have a gratitude mindset, an attitude of gratitude, it's so powerful and just like if you want to help yourself, what does Rotary stand for? 
service to others. If you want to help yourself, help other people. So spread that gratitude around. It really, really helps. It makes such a big difference. Thanks, Sheila. Thank you, David. Inspiring indeed. Thank you. David, Thank you. every time I, I open my, my mail, I see the, from the gratitude guy and I immediately delete it. But now I will not. Is that not. Ezra? <laughs> this is, so no, this is some of who Ezra looks like. <laughs> you know, the gratitude guy. I know oh, it's funny. it's true. It's true. I mean, I get I get the gratitude guy, Ooh, and I say, oh, "What the sorry. hell is this?" <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Thank you so Thank much, you, David. For, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. There. Hey, Ezra. There's Ezra. He just popped up on my screen. Just Looking quite up. distinguished, Ezra. Nice I think you're very Ezra. handsome. Oh, thank you. There's Hi. Karma. There's Karma McKay. Yeah. Hi, Karma. Hi. Well, soon Ezra will have hair. Looking <laughs> 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 good, Ezra. You. Oh, yes. my Son little, Michael. You might know off the lawn. I'll shave you. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, David. Good to see you. you Thanks for joining us. You bet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Dave, you. Dave, are you There's back on? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Planned. Come on. That me. <laughs> well, I I uh, I don't know if Dave is on us. On does anybody see Dave? Is he still with us? Yeah. No, no. I <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I got I got off the internet. So just to wrap up, did, did you hear me, David? About just thank you for your. Would you anyway? Just to sum up, thank you, David. Appreciate uh, your sharing yeah, yeah. about your attitude of gratitude. I have um, a. I looked for a quote that was a one-liner about gratitude and. I want to share with our group, and this is by Mary Davis, poet. The more grateful I am, the more beauty I see. The more grateful I am, the more beauty I see. So best to all of our club members, and I encourage you, if you haven't had a chance, reach out to four or five of our Rotarians. Reach out to someone you may not even know too well, but just to wish them well and to hear a little bit about their life. And... We will hear uh, good stories next week. So bless everybody. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you to the organizers. Bye. Thank you to the organizers. Thank you. Miss you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>